David Thorne. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Uh, I don't know why I'm You're welcoming me. me. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's not okay, man. Uh, I don't know why I'm welcoming you. Uh, I just like starting by scolding you. <laughs> <laughs> you violated the rules, oh, sir. Wow. You're, yes. You have violated the rules. You're chewing gum on a podcast. Oh! Yeah, I mean, you can do it if you want. That's It's pretty, uh, it's pretty badass, honestly. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I've been trying to quit vaping. Well, today's the first day of me trying to quit. Okay, well, vaping. don't don't do that's what I'm, don't do any anything in well, this me, area. I I hit the vape earlier because mm. I had like I have a bunch that are like dead. Because you know the disposable ones, the batteries die. Yeah, yeah, they suck. Yeah, they do suck. But then you can like let them sit a day or two, and then like hit them again, and they'll work. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, you just gotta let them. You got you, you gotta leave them laying around. Uh, I mean, I, don't, I mean, I guess you could put them up someplace, and you know, just not be trashy and leave them laying around all over the place. But you don't do how you do. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm needing to be in solidarity with you, and then just, just to quit the nicotine, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, these uh, it's rough. It's and all it's, the comics fucking do it, man. And I, and you, I hate my life too, so I get yeah. it. But at the same time, it's all in your head. If you want to quit, you'll quit. If you don't, you don't. Uh, my, it's like a decision to do it. My good friend Joe, uh, shout out Joe <laughs> back home, um, he, he got addicted to cigarettes just to uh, test his willpower. Just so really? We could, yeah, just so we could quit. I think did, it did might have been vaping. Yeah, it might have just been nicotine as a whole, but uh, yeah. yeah, he did it. And uh, but I mean, he still well, I, hits I, the occasional vape. But. I have to say, with the vape, it it isn't as harsh as smoking cigarettes. Mm-hmm. It's like, and they say that those flavors hook kids. Those flavors hook adults. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> the it ain't just great. Yeah, they <laughs> are. But I got one that made me want to quit. It was the. The, you know the little flumes, the ones that look like pills. Yeah. Uh, I got one of those. The flavor is called Breeze, and it should be called Newport flavor because that's what it tastes like—a menthol cigarette. Mm. It's like the worst. It's like the only one that I've hit, and it made me cough. I like a menthol cigarette, but I, I wouldn't like the big one. one. No, but not the vape one. Mm, yeah. That's also the longest I have had one of those disposable vapes because it was that bad. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's no good. I used to work in a vape shop. That was a sad, sad time in my life that I worked at a, in a vape shop. And look at me here, still vaping. I really gotta. <laughs> I, I, really gotta I think we should we should create social pressure among stand up comedians that like. Nicotine is somehow uncool. Well, we could save lives. <laughs> we could. I don't, I don't think people, you're going to get people to quit. Because <laughs> that's the thing. Nicotine actually is cool. Things that kill you, things that are dangerous are yeah. cool. That's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. I think everything's, everything's dangerous if you uh, believe the state of California. Well, going outside will give you cancer because of the sun. Like, everything's trying to kill you. You just can't escape death. Well, that is true about the sun. I would agree with that. The sun is, I mean, skin cancer is a thing. Literally, people just, you know, go out into the sun. And, dude, I, w- I went to Spain, like, uh, like Ibiza, this little, the little like, party island off Spain, and, yeah. uh, with, uh, with my, my folks over, the, over some summer. Like, and it was, like, hot as shit, like, one of the hottest summers ever, and I just didn't wear any sunscreen. And oh, shit. That was one of the most excruciating sun you, know. you just like peeled yeah color. the sun totally is, blistered I would imagine too the sun is a deadly laser I think that that's a song on YouTube the <laughs> Bella Hurts song it. yeah yeah no it, it really is it like you know yeah that's not good you don't wanna that, I mean so but it, yeah California is funny they put up signs everywhere like everything is, has to be labeled like yeah. it's gonna kill you I have <laughs> to say California heat's different than heat in the south though it's there's like hardly any humidity out here. It's so nice because you can go into the shade and actually get relief from the sun. 
Whereas if there's a lot of humidity, it's just like, oh, it's just as hot in the shade as it is in the sun. Yeah, that's that's Wisconsin-ish, too. Uh, like, in the swampier parts, not yeah. everywhere. But you'll get, like, cold winters and stuff, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's really slippery and, and icy and dangerous. I, speaking of uh, serial killers, I crashed my car in the parking lot of the... Uh, Mental Institute where Ed Gein died, I believe. Oh, wow. Yeah, when I was delivery driving there, because I was driving a piece of shit car that mm-hmm. I just was like neglecting, taking into like the car had all sorts of shit wrong with it. It was yeah. not ready to handle so, the snow at all. And I, Ed Gein yeah. was from Wisconsin. I think I think it was Ed Gein. It was I. I believe this was at. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, yeah. but Mendota Mental Health and and was in a uh, uh, near near listen. Madison. Yeah, I'm not gonna listen to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's all right. Uh, yeah. Mendota Mental Health. Yeah, I, I, I uh, slid a Toyota. A or no no no. A uh, I slid a Ford Taurus into the, to, into the ditch. I used to have a Ford Taurus. <laughs> That's like such a classic shitter. It it, it's so sad. That type of sedan is so sad like my car my car isn't like cool but i'm so happy to like at least just like uh, even a shitty volkswagen is something at least it's not like just this generic like you know i mean god the the street is just populated i'm looking at the street right now it's it's so actually no all of those cars were all none of those were the kind of cars we're talking about like but like yeah those (laughs) i wish everyone could have a cool car you know i don't want a street populated with a bunch of uh Toyota Camrys, you know. <laughs> How do you feel about cars? Are you a car guy? Nah, I'm not a car guy at all. But if I was going to have, like, a car, just like a cool-ass car, I'd want, like, an old box Chevy or some stupid shit like that. <laughs> that would Something, be fun. Yeah, yeah that would be cool. Mm-hmm. That or, like, you know, an electric car. Yeah, for the environment. Or just do away with cars and start riding horses again. Mm, yeah. That might be cool. That would be but, fun. That would be fun. Yeah, I, it, we have gone too far, but I mean, electric cars are fun. I wanna, I want that experience for myself. Do you, do you know how to pull the emergency brake on a horse? No. <laughs> you just pull out your gun and shoot it. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> this idea that uh, soon enough I'll have some sort of video game renaissance where I finally play all the games that my friends have recommended that I've never uh, yeah. played that are so amazing because I'm not really much of a gamer and uh, Red Dead seems like those really yeah, immersive games game. seem cool like Skyrim yeah, too. Yeah, oh, Skyrim's a amazing Seems like a game, game I should play. I haven't played it though. That game has a lot of glitches but it's still a great game. Mm, I've laughed at the glitches on YouTube. It's oh yeah. Fun. yeah. I, yeah. I know that I play, I used to be quite a gamer until I started comedy but I used to, the game that I've played probably the most is Ark Survivor Bible Evolved. You basically go around and tame dinosaurs and build badass houses. And you can, like, go and break in other people's shit if you do PvP, but... Mm. That sounds fun. Yeah, it was fun, but it took up a lot of time. Yeah, video games are uh, time-consuming. Yes, they're a time sink, for sure. Uh, Yeah, and you can really, uh, yeah, you can can really, like... But I don't know. It's, it's, you know... I mean... It's fun, though. That game, when it came out, I played that game for 37 hours straight. Like, I played it that much. That is how much I liked that game because I didn't have to work for a few days and I was like, fuck it. And I just played it for 37 hours. It was, it's, it, it's the longest I've ever played a video game. I mean, it's no different than like watching movies or, you know, one could argue that video games actually give you a lot more value for having unique experiences that whole time. Probably helps with hand coordination or something like that. Yeah, but maybe a, a, a better amount to play every day would and be like three out, like three hours a day. If I would be like that, and I would think. think about it, like figuring shit out. Like since so many games that you play, you have to like figure stuff out sometimes. Like mm. older games, like I remember Resident Evil trying to having to 
figure shit out in that game. That was always fun. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, <laughs> a really uh, humiliating memory of mine is uh, getting Ocarina of Time because I was like, all right, I'm gonna try one game, one like you know dungeon game like that one, like that. I'm gonna play the best one, Ocarina yeah. of Time. Couldn't make it past the first dungeon. Oh the wow! First shit that you have to do, I couldn't, couldn't make it past. But I play melee. I, I play yeah. melee. I'm good at melee, and I've got melee. I've, I've played a little bit of Rocket League too. Rocket League, uh, I've enjoyed because it captures the same feeling as melee, where it's like yeah. constant. You know, you're trying to like predict what's gonna happen. And yeah. Like, you know, uh, there it's it's technical and strategic, and it's yeah. like and it's Super Smash Brothers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The the GameCube yeah. one is the one I like. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm that. I'm, I'm, I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah. I used to have the GameCube. Mm. The, uh, I remember playing a lot of Fantasy Star Online on that on the GameCube. Mm. There were some crazy games for GameCube, but yeah, Nintendo is more of a family oriented company. Yeah, they've they uh, I've already talked on the podcast about how they fuck over Melee, but yeah, they fuck over Melee big time. They. Uh, I mean, I don't know. We we uh, let's let's not. Uh, we can maybe come back to that. Let's do life yeah, story. Yeah. Let's, life let's, story. Let's get let's get that going. Where uh, where are you from? Tell me about the the I mean, earliest years and your you folks. Heard my joke about Minor Hill, small town. It's in uh, Middle Tennessee on the Alabama state line. Probably the closest big city to it is Huntsville, Alabama, which I lived there for like fifteen years, but. When I was a kid, I went to uh, school, like, kindergarten. Through Alabama, I'm sorry, Alabama? Yeah, no, 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 I didn't go to school in Alabama. I lived in Alabama when I was, like, an adult for, like, 15 years. Okay. And this was uh, where? Huntsville, Huntsville, Hunts- Alabama. Huntsville, that you, but where Where did you uh, grow up? Minor Hill. Minor like, Hill, okay. Like the, like the joke I always do. I have... Where, wait, where's, where's, what state? Tennessee. Tennessee, that's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I I don't fucking know anybody's jokes. I'm sorry, man. Oh, that's cool. that's <laughs> I have a joke about it, but I'm All not right. gonna do it on the podcast. Because <laughs> please, yeah. I no. know I'm, we're not here to do bits, but yeah. Right. Uh, right. Right. Oh yeah, we had like elementary school. I went kindergarten through eighth grade at Minor Hill. Well, so, if it's a short bit, I actually would. I mean, uh, it. maybe I don't know. Okay, it's up to you. Yeah, I, I'd rather not. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> you're like you. You. It seems like you're. You vibe like a. Uh, you're in show and tell at elementary school. You're like, yeah. no, I don't want to share. Like you're the shy kid. Right now. <laughs> that's fine. That's, no, that's no, me no. too. Yeah. Uh, that's, and also, you're right. You're not. I, mean, I should just know you're fucking. I should be a good friend and like fucking watch you. No, you videos. don't. Have, no, never, never watch me if you don't want to. I mean, uh, I'm, I don't watch a lot of people because, yeah. like, like we said, we talked about earlier how it's like. I don't, I like watching comedy sometimes, but it's just like, I don't want to, I don't want to hear somebody's joke and then get stoned and then write something similar. Oh man. Yeah. I'm probably, I I hope people, uh, that makes me anxious that I do that. I hope people call me out if I ever steal shit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Please, please do that. Um, I, I've definitely like (laughs) stolen from my non-comedy friends because I'm (laughs) like, eh, they're not comedians. So it's like when you're. It's, it's sort of, being in the comedy scene is sort of like going off to college, you know? It's like, it's everybody's funniest friend in their friend yeah. group comes to you there. Would you agree? Probably so, yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. Some people that are just damaged. For you? And, uh, well, when I started comedy, I started because, like, I had separated from my wife, and I wanted to stay out here, and I didn't know anybody, so I started doing comedy to meet people, and then just, like, enjoyed it, found out that I was all right at it, and, you know gonna keep doing it oh, yeah. just keep writing that's the most important thing uh, all right now the only writing I ever do is uh, when I come up with a joke I, like off top I'll write it down and I'll, yeah, from there I just write on stage which is like I need to do a little more writing than that yeah probably I mean yeah you can write on stage with like tags and riffs even sometimes too I guess but I usually will think of things when I'm not on stage. If, I, if I'm on stage and think about it, I'll say it, and then like usually leave that in, but mm-hmm. just, yeah, I yeah. never, I, I'll like think of, it's like I'll write one part of a joke that's like 
might end up being in the middle of it. And I'll think of something a few days later that I was like, oh, I could tie yeah, that. We need, that. we need to close these curtains, man. It's distracting me. You oh, close that one. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting distracted. I'm, I'm too high, man. I'm, I'm watching the cars on the street. <laughs> and now it's mood lighting. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but uh, that's I. Uh, have you ever seen uh, Jerry Seinfeld comedian? <laughs> I feel like um, I reference. I ask is that everyone. on Netflix? Yeah, I feel like every guest that comes on, I ask them that. Maybe I have. In the beginning, it's really the. It's is that the one where they talk about premises and stuff like that? Well, I there's think. this dude. The I, probably I, they, I think they do, but they, it's. I mean, I, so I think it's probably the best documentary that's been made about stand up, and I say that in a disappointed way because it's not that good of a. <laughs> it's really not that good of a movie. It's like yeah. it's good. I'd say not not great. They're really. I want there to be better documentaries about stand up. I've thought about. Like how it'd be fun to uh, make one. I, you know, I did a little bit of film school and such. I, uh, uh, eventually, that might be a fun thing to consider. But it it has Orny, this dude Orny Adams in it, and who uh, uh, it was like a young up and coming comedian at the time, and uh, he has he had just like uh, you know like what do you call them like filing cabinets full of uh, journals and jokes and stuff wow. like that. And, yeah, that. Uh, Jordan Quattlebaum was showing me his notebook the other day that was where he has like typed out jokes and stuff and just like I guess different means of like organization for jokes is uh, um, that I should be I should be exposing myself to different um, ways of kind of like uh, like I should have like a list of like uh, I should have like all my premises and like uh, yeah. tags separated out and like you know uh, and you can kind of like uh yeah I, I I don't know I'm I, I'm rambling but that I, it would be it would be interesting to do more of that like yeah. organ like you know organizing my jokes and trying to like uh yeah, yeah, map just, that shit out you know I just put them in my phone just, I use the uh, the note on the iPhone and just write my jokes down so it sucks sometimes that I don't have my phone on me I think that's the level I'm at like it's like I'm I was in the shower earlier and I know I thought of something funny. I can remember thinking of something funny, but then I didn't put it in my phone. Mm. It'll come to me later, though. Maybe when I'm in the shower again. That's really the only the place shower that my thoughts. brain works. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was just having some good shower thoughts earlier. We earlier we've talked about that. We've already like uh, you know we're we're our our spirits are intertwined. <laughs> no, uh, I so uh, yeah no, but the I, I I'd like to like. Um, have kind of uh, become a better writer, you know, in general. That like I uh, I I was uh, in my writing papers like near the end of this past semester for school. I could feel myself like not um, really like connecting ideas very strongly and like synthesizing. Like a lot of the times, my commentary and like stuff just wasn't just wasn't great, you know. Yeah. And I think it's just because I've been smoking myself out of my goddamn gourd and I'm like <laughs> depressed and like barely getting by in a way so uh, but you know it, it, it's the you know I uh, I don't have to like wait I can like organize my writing like later today you know yeah. it's, there's always opportunities oh definitely yeah yeah definitely. Jesus man why am I I'm like in a in a, in a, in a, in a weird headspace too honest that's what I that's what I'm being let's go back <laughs> to your life <laughs> my life. Not for you to go uh, to be too. So, how long were you in Tennessee? Uh, for like, I stayed in Tennessee till I was like probably 20, in my 20s. Because, like, when I was 18, that's when I got like, just pretty much like, I'm an adult now, I can do what the fuck I want. Mm -hmm. But I would like go out and just be stupid with my friends. I was like couch crashing with one of my friends in Pulaski, Tennessee with his mom in a trailer park and just, you know, being a little shithead to like my mid twenties and then I moved with this girl to Huntsville and we stayed there for about we me and her stayed together for about thirteen years, but then we uh we broke up and I'd stayed in Huntsville until like met my wife. Okay. You like it there? 
It was okay. I liked Huntsville better than I liked Minor Hill because it was a bigger city. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was still the South. It was more progressive than Minor Hill, obviously. Every like every city, city every city is right. it's more progressive. But yeah, it was uh, it was all right. I wish I would have found comedy out there, but I didn't. I didn't even think to. There's like people out there with no motivation or drive to do anything it seems <laughs> so, uh, so that's what happens when it's that hot yeah <laughs> it's just you fry the oil out of your brain <laughs> yes just definitely yeah yeah I've, I've been there well that's sack too and yeah I don't know sacks are right sacks sacks pretty cool I'm liking it yeah it's just during the summer it's a decent decent city it's not bad yeah, for sure. But uh, Huntsville, that's where Space Camp is, right? Yes. yes. Uh, I went to Space Camp. Oh, really? One you summer. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was my uh, experience in Alabama. That was like that was my experience in the. That's my whole like. I'm and I think that represents my cultural background so well. Like if I'm going to the South. It's for <laughs> Space <laughs> Camp. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it's literally yeah. the only thing I always South. wanted to do that. And my parents or Austin. Awesome. Literally, Austin or Space Camp. <laughs> My parents could have literally just took me down there to Space Camp and let me go, but they never let me go. I was like, I want to go, and they're like, it costs too much money. Damn, <laughs> yeah, that fucking money and capitalism. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it wasn't power. that they couldn't, couldn't afford it. They, my dad was just cheap. Yeah. <laughs> he, he could have easily probably sent me to Space Camp because he was retired from the Air Force, and he farmed... And I was I was just raised by my grandparents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because my mom like put me up for adoption. I don't know why I'm saying mm-hmm when I did I didn't know that already. I'm like a parrot. I'm <laughs> no, like, you're I just making noises. I'm trying you're, to. You're, I, I'm trying to learn how to be a human here. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, hard. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking weird. Uh, but uh, you're so you lived with your. Uh, I've I've also spent a little bit of time living with my grandma. I lived with my grandma for a couple of months because oh, I had like a weird immature falling out with my roommate and oh, really? yeah, I moved in with my grandma. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, that was crazy. I'm it not. A, I, I think I'm a crazy. I think I'm. Uh, <laughs> I'm crazy. I've definitely got some. If you don't have some personality disorder, you gotta have something. These yeah. days, yeah, you gotta have at least PTSD. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> life gives that to everybody at some point or another. Yeah, yeah, we all. It's kind of like, um, well, uh, I, uh, I won't. I, I, I guess. Uh, well, I'll, I'll just, I'll just give credit to the. Per- I won't steal this. I'll give credit to the, but I'll still share it. That I think my. Uh, uh, yeah, someone I know, uh, Sasha Rosser, Midwest comedian, has yeah. uh, has uh, brought about the idea in her Twitter philosophizing or, yeah. or artistically somehow of like human or no, it was a piece of music she made uh, under her handle, uh, the, something Android related, yeah. it, it, um, it, of like human centipede uh, emotional, you know, uh, like abuse, you know, like we. We uh, tend to give the same abuse that we've received, you yeah. know. Like we, yeah, yeah. It's like a human centipede thing. We we get shit from Sai and shit down. So you, other people's shit it back down other people's throats, dude. That's yeah. why we gotta gotta shit out less than we <laughs> less than we consumed. That's the goal, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the goal. That's the goal. I'm not saying human centipede. I yeah. know what it's about, but it, that that's gross. It is gross. It is fucking gross. I have a hard time, like, I'm very squeamish. I like at this point in my life for some reason I'm getting more squeamish, like, and like I have delicate sensibilities. You know, I'm not much of a horror guy. I don't like serial killer shit. Like, I get weirded out by all of that. I like horror, but I don't like intense gore. Mm-hmm. I like light gore. I'm not like a huge. In gore, like if it's animated gore, all day go hard on that shit. But like if it's like actual human actors, and a lot of times they use practical effects for that shit, it's just like it's like, ugh. yeah, blood is kind of icky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, I'm looking at my Us poster. Do you see that movie? I don't believe I've seen that. Mm, that one has some pretty violent uh, scissor action. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but which I, I was actually kind of chill because it was like stylish. I think a lot of horror movies are kind of like are kind of drab. I don't know. Yeah. Like horror well, was more stylish. I I grew up in the slasher genre era 
of horror movies. Like the the eighties was nothing but like slasher movies. Right, it's just like, like as gruesome as possible. Yeah, I mean, you have this this main guy who's going around killing teenagers, like you know Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger's in your dreams, but you know like some big baddie like Michael Myers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Michael Myers, yeah, uh, um, ski mask. Uh, our hockey hockey mask guy. It's uh, the, that's Jason Voorhees. Uh, Michael Myers is a guy from Halloween, and that mask that he wears is actually William Shatner's face. It's made from William Shatner. Ah, uh, what? I I don't think I know what mask. You're, it's a like a human mask. Yeah, it's just like a white human face, but it's actually William Shatner's face in a white mask form. The the Star Trek guy. Yeah. And then like some commercials after that. More recently. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, wow. Yeah. Horror is fucking weird. Man. It is. I, 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 uh, I worry that I look like Freddy Krueger. I don't think it's that bad. Uh, I don't right? think you look like Freddy Krueger. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, you're, he's, he's like burned all, all over. Yeah, no, no, no burns, just, just acne, no burns, <laughs> just, uh, yeah, thank God, yeah, yeah, it always, yeah, and, and then, uh, yeah, that's a bummer, but how there's, like, burn victims and shit, like, yeah. damn, just living their life like that, crazy, yeah, yeah. I pour one out, pour it, donate, <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah, um, okay, so, uh, yeah, Alabama, um, it was, it was, it was uh, terrible. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. When, when again? That you moved there? Oh, Alabama probably when I was in my mid twenties. Mid twenties. Twenty three, going on twenty four. Like that's when I started to quit being like so wild because there was a time from like eighteen to twenty four where I was just out running around doing dumb shit, getting, like, high on cough medicine. Because <laughs> we didn't have actual access to good drugs where, where I was from, so we were forced to be inventive and go and find everything that you could buy at Walmart that could get you fucked up. That's some real down south shit. It's some real down south shit. I mean, <laughs> we're not even talking about, like, you know, making meth or anything, just things that you can take that will get you fucking fucked up, like... Like, what we did all the time was, like, called this stuff called cortisone and HBP, high blood pressure. Mm. And you'd take, like, starting out, you'd take, like, half a sheet of it, and it'd get you kind of fucked up. Like, the closest thing I can compare it to is something like ecstasy, but not really. It was just weird. Mm. It was a weird drug, and yeah. Mm, that's a lot of recreational drugs. But, like... It, vaguely weird. I've heard them yeah. described that way. I, uh, I, I think I've mostly. Have, uh, there's been times that I could have done like recreational drugs, but I'm glad that I feel yeah. like I've mostly done the standard, the I mean, mainstream ones. It's it's been bad. There's been times that I've been on medicine trips where I was like, I've just been sitting there. I was like, this is what it feels like to be dead. Uh, <laughs> it's just like that thought comes through your head. You're just like. What the hell? I had a thought earlier of uh, or, or a joke came to mind. I didn't write it down. I forgot to. I, um, life is a jerk off, and I always just came. <laughs> my ball, life is a jerk off, and my balls are drained. How about that? <laughs> How about that for a joke? <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Life is a jerk off on my ball. <laughs> that is uh, about. That is about. Uh, I think it's how a lot of people in my generation feel. We're just like fuck it. Yeah. Like, how old are you? At 20, 21. Yeah. 21, okay. I think about it. Yeah, I'm a few years older than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just yeah. a couple. Yeah, I was shocked to hear your age. Uh, oh, yeah. or like a little bit. Uh, not shocked, but like, you know, uh, like 10 years surprised. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like 10 years I don't, before. I don't act like I'm 41 at all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I guess I'm have young. You hang out with comics. Yeah, my brain's not probably developed right. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Comedy is so funny, man. <coughs> Just a bunch of people with like mental illnesses come out okay. there. Mental illness out the ass. Like I know I'm. I have to take medicine for it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's uh, 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 a good thing. Oh yeah. To do. 
definitely it helps. If it's, it's better than not being on. I don't know. It was in the bad habit of like not taking all my medicine because I had been drinking doing comedy. Like coming home, I don't want to take antidepressants after I've been drinking. Mm-hmm. So I just started, <laughs> I started I already, taking them again, and now I feel better. It's like I'm already on my antidepressants. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but alcohol is a depressant. Yeah, it, that's why it's so. That's that's why it's so good. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it's kind of. It is like it's funny. If you're depressed, then a depressant makes you ha- makes you stimulate it, right? I believe it seems it, like. It's does that seem, does that happen for you? Um, it depends on the depression, really, because mm. you can fall into that deep depression where nothing's gonna help it. Yeah. You just gotta figure it out for yourself. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's um right. Yeah, yeah. There there is um it's tough because I feel like there's some people that would say something like that. Not you necessarily, yeah. but like that would say something like that and mean that and like also just not be willing to engage with with their friends about anything serious. I do think that we should op- be open to like, you know, yeah. Have, but sometimes when people are just like being a leech, that that can be like uh, there's a certain type of depressed that I've been where it's just like I'll just like leech on to someone and like be depressed at them and like I've definitely oh people, yeah people I, have needed to cut me out of out of their life somewhat then in good in times when that's needed to happen. <laughs> oh, I'm like that for sure. I don't hide my depression. I'm just like just like I'm tired of well. people have compared me to Eeyore from uh. Winnie the Pooh. Ah, Eeyore is, Eeyore is good. Eeyore is good people. I right? like Eeyore. Uh, <laughs> but you know, like, I'm, I'm sure that I think there was somebody who wrote something on, like, the characters in Winnie the Pooh being, like, people in a mental institution and comparing them to the different, like, personality disorders in the mental institution. Like, Eeyore is, is obviously depression. Yeah. But, you know, in the show, he always loses his tail. I feel like his tail is a representation of his will to live. <laughs> his friends always help him find it, you know? Aww. I'm sure it probably says that in that paper, but I don't remember reading it because I just like make a Some nerd word. wrote it down. Some but, nerds wrote that down. Uh, but, but you, you know, thought of some it. Ner- I, maybe I didn't. Maybe somebody else had the same thought. It doesn't matter who thought of it first. Yeah, you but, can claim it on here. Yeah, uh, yeah but you know, that's how... Uh, I think that's what his tail stands for, though, if you're, like, looking at it from a perspective of different t- personality disorders in a... Because there's an article on it. I'm sure I may have got that from the Yeah, article. yeah, I think, I've, I, think I've, I may have seen that. Yeah, it's, it was, like, a year or so ago. I think this I is classic it. coastal elitism. Oh, yeah, I've seen that article. Yeah, yeah. Like, dude, every <laughs> fucking person on the West Coast or the East Coast is like, oh, I've seen that, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Everyone needs to be first on the people back like there, like college football, Dale Earnhardt, <laughs> like Dale Earnhardt Jr. Roll Tide. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, I haven't heard that in so fucking long. My brother, one of my brothers, is a huge Alabama fan, and the other one is a Tennessee Vols fan. And I was like, man, if I'm gonna like a stupid college team, I'm gonna like the one that's like not either of those teams. So I'm like, I like Auburn. If I had to pick a college team, but I don't really care about sports that much. It's good to, yeah, you need to pick a team to uh, express yourself. I do like sports jerseys, though. I mean, Me too. I mean, like, I have a Sacramento Kings basketball jersey that somebody got me that's kind of not, it's small, but I'm, I still wear it because I don't care. <laughs> it's fun to wear a jersey on stage. It's fun to wear a uniform. Oh, yeah, yeah. I am, I'm a... I've got a look that I'm gonna start going for when I'm doing the doing my shows. What's that look? I like uh, wearing dickies, like the work shirt and then the dickies pants, all black. Mm. That's cool. I just like wearing black. It's very slimming and yeah, I don't know. And it's it's just it's just cool. It's just, just cool as shit. Yeah. And if you're depressed, if you're Eeyore, I was just thinking about this earlier today, man. Um, I, I was thinking about how uh, uh, this there's this like political show I watched, The Majority Report, and it used to have a, uh, a uh, someone on there, Jamie, who uh, she she's goth, and uh, like I mean it it's in her uh, the Twitter handle. There's it like yeah. I, I'm sure that's a fair characterization, um, or it's in her Twitter bio rather, and uh, she like doesn't fucking uh, laugh like hardly ever, and she's just she has that like depressed like 
sunken thing. And I will laugh sometimes, but generally I'm, I'm a pretty fucking stone-faced and emotionless, and that's why I like to wear black. And so yeah. maybe that's not why you want to wear black, yeah. but for me I it's... I just like it because black is cool. I, I do think it's dark. I think I might want to lean into the goth thing. I think my, I might <laughs> might see me with some nail polish and some like <laughs> I, I I don't know. <laughs> I just uh, I, I like black's hotter though. Black is way hotter in the summertime, but yeah, it's um, hotter year round. Sexy. <laughs> I remember when I first started, I used to wear my sunglasses on stage. It's just looking back as stupid as fuck. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> now I have to wear glasses to read, so. Looks like I'm ended up wearing glasses either way. Get fucked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, because the people that said don't wear your glasses on stage. <laughs> I found the loophole, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, yeah. I, I, uh, I like to wear glasses. Right? <laughs> you can probably see so you can see, right? All right, right. Yeah, contacts are on, are, uh, I was not responsible enough for that was the issue. Not responsible enough. Uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I would leave them in, like, when I went to sleep and shit. Okay. Yeah. Um, you ever try contacts? Yeah, when I was younger, I had glasses, and I stopped wearing them when I was, when I, in my, I don't know, I'll probably stop wearing them before I went to high school, I know. Mm. And I don't know why, but I wore contacts, and they sucked. I had disposable contacts, though. Okay. Like, daily? Not daily, but like you wear them for a few days and then you throw them away. Okay. Well, you probably weren't supposed to wear them for three few days and throw them away. But <laughs> you did. Maybe, yeah. maybe you were, maybe you weren't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I'll make a return to contacts when I would. Uh, uh, I, it would be free. I, it is kind of a because uh, I can't do like I can't do anything athletic. Like, yeah. <laughs> especially not like. <laughs> but dude, I do though, and like especially since I like. I was just, I was, as a dumb kid, I bought these statement glasses, you know, and like yeah. I've climbed a mountain in these, and like I play street basketball in these, they're like my only, I have no choice, you know, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I'm really, I'm really dumb, you know that, I'm really, but like I can, I can like write when I'm alone and I have time to think, so like what's yeah. up with that, like I can write something good, you know, and oh, I feel yeah. like I've written good jokes, you know, I like oh, jokes. Yeah. Yeah. I like the one about your grandma taking <laughs> the dog. <laughs> Dude, were you there at the workshop? Oh, that, it, okay, that was hilarious. I don't know. I, uh, I saw you at the workshop. I was like ripped at a uh, at a uh, at, at, at the Life's Unlimited workshop, but I won't talk about it if you weren't there. Are you getting a call? Yeah. Oh my God, are you big timing me right now? No, I'm not big timing you. I'll uh, call him back later. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, you can. You, we can pause if you want. Oh yeah. Let me see. Yeah, that wouldn't be an issue. We're about halfway. Alright, there we go. And we're back. Yeah. Seamless. Um, so. Honestly, I didn't big time you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey man, I'm doing something. Yeah, I, I like the spontaneity. Like, why not? Yeah, why not fucking? Why not, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone should know that. You didn't big time me. I yeah. just like. If anything, I was like totally. Uh, uh, I, I just totally submitted to you. You know, you're, yeah. you're, you're, <laughs> you know, you. Uh, I, I just, you know, figured uh, it's better. What am I saying? I was anxious, so I just wanted to. Uh, I'm a people pleaser. How did this? <laughs> let's do uh, therapy. How did this happen? Why am I? Why am I such a people pleaser? Why can't I? Why can't I? Uh, you know, look out for myself more. <laughs> what do you? What do you? You know. Fucking yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I'm, I'm 41 years old, about to be 42 years old, and I still don't know what the fuck. You don't even know about your own life. You yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. not gonna <laughs> give anybody freaking advice when I'm, you know, I'm not a good, I'm not the person to get advice from. <laughs> I'm just verbally processing over here. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, how'd you end up in SAC? Okay, here's my sad comedian backstory. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, uh, after I broke up with that girl for 13 years, I was like single for a few years. And then I met my wife, which, you know, would be my girlfriend when I met her, obviously, because that's the way progression of relationships work. <laughs> uh, but I like, you know, met her online and we started talking on the phone and we hit it off and she flew out to meet me. And then like I flew out to meet her and we drove back across country with all her stuff and she moved in with me in Huntsville and then we stayed together there for a few months and my dad got he's he was like my granddad was eighty five. My gra- 
grandmother had already passed away at that point, and we moved in with him, and I stayed with him like the last year of his life. And when he passed away, we moved out here, and that's where I uh, I stayed with her and her mom for like a year, and then I had a actual breakdown. And you were you were coming off of girlfriend or like you know romantic and uh, familial loss. Oh, so. okay. like back to back to back, you know, over a couple of years, and then come out here and had a breakdown where I yelled at my wife and mother in law, and pretty much after that, the marriage went downhill. Mm-hmm. Found out that she like cheated on me, and then went and started doing comedy because we was like that was the kick that made me have to get out from around her, mm-hmm. and I started doing comedy, and I found out that I'm okay at it. Mm-hmm. So, I'd say. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I've I've uh I I understand your uh I I rem- I, I know that I like your uh act even though I can't remember any of your bits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I understand your stage presence. That, oh, and that's yeah. the case for a lot of people. I I know their stage presence even if I don't remember their bits or whatever. I'm, I have very dark jokes which sometimes I feel like that's why I don't get booked because people a lot of people can't handle Fuck them. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to continue writing dark humor because that's what appeals to me the most. With, I think that's funny. I like trying to find the the comedy in like a car accident, you know, just like just weird stuff. Like, me too. Like I like doing a lot of uh, suicide joke, look like jokes where it's like a suicide joke, but it's misdirected into something else. Mm-hmm. It's just I don't know. I so, did, yeah, I did one at. Uh, it was probably just a little throwaway joke. Sometimes I just do a little something just to express myself, even yeah. if I'm not going to keep it. And uh, I did a joke in Stockton the other day of like uh, when Nickelodeon changed its logo from the splatter to, yes. the, to the Nick. I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that's for real, man. That's the, the maybe I have. What's the? the it, I think they call it like uh, Peter Pan syndrome or something, where you want to be a kid or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I thought about that. I thought about that. There's a name for that. I don't know. I probably don't have that, but it. I think that's kind of universal to some degree. And, uh, I mean, we all, we, unless your childhood was, like, abusive, we all generally yeah. have, even even then sometimes, you know, you it still can be, you can look at it through rose-colored glasses. Oh, yeah. The world's a crazy place. You just gotta live in it, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially this apartment where you get a lot of craziness. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, with the crowd here. Um, but the... Uh, Loneliness and depression and loss, that's all a good starting point for <laughs> making people laugh. Oh, because, yeah. Have you seen Pete Holmes's show, Crashing? Uh, no, I don't believe that I have. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a good show. It starts off with his wife cheating on him and getting divorced and, like, uh, you know, kind of leaving his, like, hardcore Christian roots, too. And yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it, and it's, it's my favorite show that's been made about stand up. I, I kind of like. I, I like shows about stand-up, you know, stuff that yeah. like, makes me feel like it's, uh, yeah. uh, I'm hanging out it's with like comedians. Trying to be relatable to it. Hanging out with comedians is cool. Comedians are, I've met, like, some of the best people through comedy. Yeah. Then, and I like them. Yeah, I, I, I love some of them, like, like, friends, like, you know. Comedy's cool, though. I don't think that I'd do anything else but that. If I don't make it, I'm going to keep doing it, probably. But what is making it? It's all up to me if I'm making it or not. If my idea of making it is doing what I'm doing now, then I fucking made it, right? Hey, you're, you're getting on stage, right? We're going to do a mic later today. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm, I'm super, like... Living as though each day might be my last, you know. Uh, I, uh, I, 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 well, not like not super. I'm not like going crazy, but like I, I'm just very like uh, nihilistic, you know. I'm very. I'm like, with you. You think I'm the like, world's gonna end end soon? You we were talking about this. When I was younger, like I think the first time I ever had a breakdown, I thought the world was gonna end, and I stayed up for like a fucking week. Why did do you think the world was gonna end? Because it was nineteen ninety nine. I was stupid. Not even into two thousand. Not even Y two K. A year before Y two K. I don't oh, even man. know why. What you said your own thing? Yeah. You're like no thing. guys. It's nineteen ninety nine. When yeah. it's like ninety nine, it's good. Because it's six 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 upside down. Uh, oh <laughs> really? Was that it? That was it, I believe. Okay. All right. All right. Are you a Christian man? I'm not really. In, 
I was raised Baptist. Okay. I mean, yeah. it's like some of the shit in the Bible. The only thing that you could get out of the Bible is like that golden rule, you know, doing the other You know, I, I sense some like, atheism from you, and I've expressed some hostile tones towards atheists on this show, but I've, I, I, uh, just because like the atheists, some of them are like, uh, twerps, but mo- like most of those people were never religious. Most people who were religious have a good understanding. There is something that you can take. I just of, like the golden that, rule. You know, the golden rule is the only thing out of the Bible that any person could know. Like, just treat people how you want to be treated. Basically, mm-hmm. just if you don't want people to fuck you over, don't fuck people over. You know, but yeah. sometimes it's hard to not fuck people over. On it's that a lot of. There's lot sometimes of you get put in those situations where you have to fuck over one party, kind of. I guess. Yeah. Um, that is always a, a bummer. That a, a lot of uh, like uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's just. I mean, fairness is like a. I mean, I, it could never. It, it's something that we strive for, right? Like it's not. Yeah. It, it, yeah but it can never be. Um, you know, this shit will never be fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. And, and it's yeah. It's always. It's always difficult. We're always gonna like hurt people accidentally sometimes. Oh yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah, that's just life. Yeah, yeah, and like hurt people on purpose too, yeah. even. But you had said something about being a nihilist, and I've kind of like embraced that for most of my life, and it's not a good belief, I guess, but it makes the most sense out of anything I've ever. I was just like. Does anything really matter? But at the same time, you have to, I guess, give your life its own purpose. Yeah. Make the best of it. Like, I I prefer stoicism to nihilism. That's like, make the best of it, basically. Yeah. Just, yeah, be pragmatic. And, like, just take life. Do, just, you know, do whatever you can to do right for yourself. And that's, like, duh, right? Like, obviously, like, try to have the most fun. Yeah you can while helping others have as much fun as you're having that's yeah. a lyric from a band Andrew Jackson Jihad uh, <laughs> that's a funny name right that is a funny name <laughs> yeah they changed it to AJJ because of because it's not nice to well Andrew Jackson was actually from Tennessee and he was and a dick he was responsible for the Trail of Tears and yeah. whatnot. He yeah. Was a, but you know, you would never hear anybody say that about him in the South because they're just like, he was a he was a governor and he was from Tennessee. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't tell you about the, the part like that. Yeah. 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 There's a little bit of hero worship and a little bit of maybe idealizing. How much idealizing the Confederacy is there actually? I don't know. Um, you'll see a lot of Confederate flags in the South, like just on trucks and in yards sometimes. A lot of people probably just don't really get what are just like, heritage, not hate. (laughs) 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 But but it's like, that. that's not good heritage. But don't examine our heritage. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Don't read about it. It's just a nice flag. God, I forgot what I was going to say. What was I I talking about again? Uh, The, uh, the, Oh yeah, just uh, mental mental uh, breakdown for 1999. Was that the? No, I thought we were talking about something else. About oh, the from 99. Yeah, I thought the world was gonna end. Yeah. Wait, was that your mental breakdown that you described after your uh, yeah. whole deal with? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the first one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's um. Yeah. Uh, mental health needs to be. If you have mental health, you need to take care of it. It is a thing. The only thing that makes me different than any, that guy out in the street yelling at a fucking stop sign is I have a place to stay, probably. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just, I would be, if I didn't have my medicine to take, take care of it, I probably could get that bad, but just try to self care. Yeah, I've um, heard the idea recently that we have a responsibility to um, raise up the. Our fellow humans on this earth to our our standards of life, you know, yeah. and uh, look out for one another. Look out. That's another thing that you can. That's pretty heavy in some parts of the Bible, right? Yeah. The idea that look Charity. out for the least yeah. of us. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was in the Bible too. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible that's just dumb, like Ezekiel twenty three twenty. That's it's not dumb, but it's one of the funniest passages. Talk about some lady lusting after. Like 
It's basically says so she wanted big dick and big lugs in her face. I'm just <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> that's so awesome though, because I mean, that's so like yeah, that's lit. Of course, a religious text should have kinky shit in it. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> but then religious people shouldn't go and be all repressed. Like yeah. your text has kinky shit in it. Exactly, but like it's not that kinky. Uh, maybe it is. But anyway, it's not like big freaking, loads in her face, dude. Well, I mean, it's for a religious text. If I, if I could remember the exact quote, it's like she lusted after lovers with genitals like that of donkeys and ambitions like that of horses. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe no that's way. The, Ezekiel twenty three twenty. Look it up. All right, yeah, yeah. but that, that's well, that's worth. Uh, I can multitask. I Ezekiel twenty three twenty. That's the, one of the funniest uh, verses in the Bible, I think. Right on. The Bible is weird. I mean, it has some cool stories in it, I guess. I mean, I should I should get more down with that. Jesus is pretty metal. He brought somebody back to life. Dude, you nailed it. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. There she lusted after her lovers whose genitals were like those of donkeys and whose omission was like that of horses. <laughs> yeah. She lusted after lovers whose <laughs> genitals as large as a donkey. Oh, that's the same thing that the, it said in the first one. All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a Bible verse. Uh, I wanted to do a joke about that. It was, uh, that's awesome. It's like, that's like, <laughs> it went, like, your mom's so big of a whore, she puts in what's her Bible verse, and it's a Zeke of But it's not funny unless you read the Bible. You just have to say, start it. Start like, off with the quote. I'd be like, I'd like freaking write a bunch of jokes like that. I'd be like, yeah, I could do church jokes. <laughs> <laughs> do like that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I've heard I've heard from two different places recently that churches are like good places to get booked if you do clean comedy. Yeah, yeah. but I'm not. Oh, man, yeah, I don't want to write it. It's uh, but it's it, a good option if I ever want. It is if you want to like get paid to do it, and you if you're trying to get paid to do it. That's probably where you're gonna make the most money, especially probably around here anywhere. But I would love to do uh, go to a church and do like super abstract character work. Like make like an eighth of mushrooms. And oh like, man! Just go hog wild. I wouldn't. I would like love to see how a church would respond to my humor. I think I. Me yeah, too. I have very dark humor. Say that it's set, send in a clean set and uh, that would be a good. Price. And then just go in there and just freaking do my do my set about suicide and anal beads. <laughs> <laughs> like see heads start exploding. Look. See, anal beads can help prevent suicide, so they should be, <laughs> uh, really, if we're trying to help people. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, well, okay, so uh, um, we, we did your, uh, did we cover your whole uh, life story? Can you tell me more about, like, what stuff you did for fun? But, yeah, I guess, yeah, like, like what you, fun, did like, you watch, did you watch stuff or, like, like when listen I was to a, music or was it mostly hang out? I hang out with friends mostly. We watch like South Park shit like that, of course. I know there was this one summer where we watched, you know, Trey Parker and Matt Stone made a movie called Cannibal the Musical, and we watched that movie religiously one summer. Like, I know I watched that movie at least fourteen times during the summer, just because we liked the movie so much. That was a good movie. I mean, I yeah. played baseball as a kid, but I wasn't very active in sports. I've, you're one of the first people I've met that's really done that with movies. That's totally me with movies. Like, I've had a long history in my life of, like, watching movies that I like a shit ton. Like, uh, it was first, um, the very first one was Apollo 13 with yeah. Tom Hanks. And then, like, School of Rock, Ocean's Eleven, Ratatouille. It's just been all these... Yeah movies like I'll, I'll for some reason like I'll just find some movie that I'll latch onto and watch yeah. over and over and over again there's one movie that I can always watch and that's Walk Hard I love that movie actually. that's like one of my favorite movies and I have an amazing memory of the first time I saw that movie I do too really fuck yeah. yeah tell me yours we'll trade well um the first time I saw that movie was in the theaters and I actually watched it with both my grandparents and that was the first time ever I'd been to the actual movie theater and sat down and watched a movie with both of them and it was that movie and it was funny because like my dad was sitting 
on this side when mom was in the middle and I was right here. And you know the part of the movie where he's in the hotel room and that dude walks up and his dick's like right beside his face? Yeah. Just watching my dad laugh at my mom's reaction to that was fucking priceless. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's uh, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. But that's my uh and now, like, whenever I watch that movie, I just, like, think of my parents and I always cry at the end of it. At, at, at the end of a, a movie, that's silly. Like, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that song, A Beautiful Ride, that's, it's like, that's a good song. I'll have to listen to that song again. It, the actual, it has the soundtrack, and freaking John C. Riley sings the whole thing. That's, he's one of my favorite actors. I like John C. Riley. Me too. He, uh... I was bitching and moaning to a friend of mine that uh, uh, I would that I'm like not attractive enough to be a famous comedian, and she was like, "Dude, John C. Riley." Yeah. <laughs> he's uh, yeah. <laughs> not the weird, not the best looking guy. He's a pretty yeah. weird looking guy. He is. He he looks just goofy, you know. Mm-hmm. Non-threatening goofy. So, what's your uh, walk hard story? Uh, my, uh, uh, my, my boys and I, uh, we're going to a Tame Impala concert and we slept over at one of their friends, or uh, one of their dad's, uh, houses, uh, that, like this big, like nice house. The only time I got to, I, I got to stay over there. I wasn't like yeah. a close friend, but I got to go over there that one time and there was like a big ass basement that was really cozy. A lot of like, uh, uh, just, I remember being comfortable. They were like beds and shit and yeah. uh and and the big tv and we watched and we watched walk hard and we were going to a concert the next day oh, yeah. we were all just hanging out and it was like the first time i'd seen it and it was a good time in my life too i wasn't too fucked up yet you know yeah we it was even it was a good time even though we were sober like yeah. it was weird it was weird to think of those times you know yeah i can uh I guess you didn't even, uh, uh, but I mean, I feel like in the South, they just give you like cough syrup when you're born. Right? <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, guess, you didn't even have a time before. They were, I mean, drugs, good drugs are hard to find in the South. You mm-hmm. had to like go through sketchy people. You had to go through sketchy people to get weed. Like it Same was, in Wisconsin. It's terrible. Like, I don't know. I, yeah. I have a story I tell on stage that's based on the true story of me getting robbed while uh, buying weed. It wasn't even like, I didn't even really get robbed because I was broke and my friend got robbed. I got robbed for like a dollar of his change that I used to buy cigarettes when we went to buy weed from some sketchy people. I'm so glad that I haven't been robbed. Like I, I've heard it's not, I mean, <laughs> I've heard bad things about being robbed. Yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, but it's nice that uh, money is largely digital now. It makes that a lot easier, you know, uh, in a lot of ways. Like, you'd just be like, oh, where'd all my money go? There's, like, fraud protection a lot of the time, you know? They're, like, maybe that is an anxiety that can, is kind of, like, you know, going down a little bit. And, and yeah. That we can at least, you know, hopefully there can be a little bit of a collective, you know, blood pressure lowering. Unless unless you're someone that carries, like, a shit ton of cash around, like, in which case, that's, that's badass, dude. That's like, the <laughs> reason I stopped carrying cash. I got robbed that one time. I'm like, I'm never carrying cash around again, because what are you going to do? Yeah. You'll get my debit card and... Uh, get, I'm just gonna call and fucking cancel it as soon as you leave. Yeah, a couple twenties is a better move do? than just carrying the like, charges. Like, yeah, I mean, who even is that guy that carries like two hundred dollars around cash anymore? I feel like old people, like old people, fucking yeah. still do that. I mean, there's a lot of probably people who make their money. Yeah, through illegal ways. Yeah, that too. Old people and pimps. Well, the, what's yeah. good about now is you can sometimes Venmo your drug dealer. <laughs> but exactly. There's, yeah. But there's like, you know, that's kind of. If you both have Apple phones, it's secure, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Apple pay your drug dealer. <laughs> right, yeah. The, it, the the technology, the, you know, big tech is going to shield us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, uh, okay, sweet. Um, well, uh, 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 oh. you did stuff with Frank. You watched, watched movies a lot. I did yeah, that too. I, I did watch movies a lot. I just remember The same this. movies a lot. Like, when I was 18, I was in a punk band. I forgot to tell you about Sweet. that. Sweet. I was uh, not in a punk band when I was 18, but I was a little bit earlier than that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, what was, your, what was your band's name? Uh, they were called the Piss Ant Militia, and I was the bass player. Go figure. The depressed guy's the bass player always, because oh, more bass players commit suicide in bands. Is that true? There's a lot of bass players that have committed suicide. The bass player, I think it was a bass player for Slipknot. I don't think I know of any. The uh, bass player for Slipknot? I think there's a bass player from some punk band. I want to say Pennywise, but I'm not sure. 
Mm. There's like a few. Uh, Pennywise. I always that's such a banger. Uh, Puck Authority, their big one. The, yeah. the their, their big hit. I like No Effects too. No Effects has to be one of my favorite punk bands of all time. I mm. love No Effects. They're one of the longest running punk bands out there. Even longer than the Ramones. Hell yeah. Yeah, they're freaking badass. Fat Mike's a weird character, but he's he's cool. He writes good music. He's awesome. Yeah. Uh, did you see that documentary, The Other F Word? Uh uh-uh. uh It's about uh, punk dads. He's in it, and it's like get him and his kid. It's adorable. He's like playing around with his kid. And I want to see that now. What is that on? Uh, I don't know. It's I haven't seen it in ages. It was on Netflix once upon a time, but it wasn't a very big movie. It was just it, it, uh, you can you can find it somewhere. You might have yeah. to you'll have to pirate it or pay for it. Or you know? it. Where, yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Um, it's a uh, it's a good. Um, I don't really remember very much of it, but uh, it was uh, it was good. I always like the thing that. Uh, no effects never they, they claim to never have done a show sober they claim that <laughs> it's no. zero zero sober shows ever in their career yeah, they're, they're fun I don't know if I believe that but I like that they claim it I'm it wouldn't surprise me I think Fat Mike's sober now though mm, yeah yeah because I, I was going to say in the documentary he was like he I, was. I, I won't so at one point in time that was the legend yeah so it probably but yeah yeah that god sobriety that would probably be a good thing it could be like you know sharper and stuff partial you know? sobriety maybe partial sobriety <coughs> like just don't drink <coughs> sorry no yeah no, I, you're the one coughing I don't want to I'm sneezing on the podcast though Ugh. no worries god bless <coughs> oh my god Woo. I have sneezing fits you couldn't have huh? okay. yeah you need to uh, no I'm good okay. I'm fine okay sweet what well, yeah, well, can we do for you? <laughs> Comment right. you sneeze on. All right. Oh, I'm great. All right, all right, all right. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, were, were we, uh, did I interrupt a thread about, like, more, I guess, like, more, I'm, I'm digging for, like, talking more about backstory punk, stuff. Punk oh, punk, you're a punk fan. You're, yeah, dude, yeah. oh, my God. Short term memory. We I were a story, though, at the time. There was one time where we had a show in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and we drove all the way up there. Before the uh, show started, we were all on stage checking the stage out, and we're just joking around. It was like, oh, this stage isn't going to hold us. We'll probably end up breaking it. And, you know, fast forward to the show starts. We're playing. We get on our second song. Our lead singer jumps up in the air and then falls through the stage up to his freaking waist. And we're just like sitting there and we're like fucking stopping. We're like, what the fuck? We like pull him out of the stage and, you know, restart the song we're on. And then the owners of the club come out, which our lead singer was friends with one of the owners. The other owner comes out, pulls out the plug and tells us to get the fuck out. And we have to leave without getting paid. That reminds me that, well, first off, that's a fucking... <laughs> awful experience, probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that sounds terrible. It was horrible. Uh, yeah, especially for the dude that fell through. Was he okay? Yeah. Well, he was okay, but his, he said his back hurt for like a couple of days after that. I believe it. Did you sue him? Nah. Yeah, that's that's good. No, that's, that's not, that isn't punk at all. Soon. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Well, yeah. I mean, America is too lawsuit happy. I mean, I don't want yeah. to say never sue, but yeah. Uh, or I mean. I, yeah. uh, I'm not feeling like figuring out if I agree morally with suing right now. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. It yeah. seems like can't people just have duels in the streets over stuff? That's what I. That's what my uh, boss at my first job advocated for. Genuinely, he was this old Sicilian guy who uh, would. Uh, he he liked he liked alcohol. He liked making pizzas. He liked <laughs> hanging out. He advocated for duels. He was like, <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, you should uh, solve, s- solve your issues with the duels. <laughs> like, you know, uh, like the Old West. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, he, he was a badass. That was a, that was a good place. <laughs> I, I think they're shutting down. I think they're. Uh, uh, I think he's retiring. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, yeah, the passage of time. But oh, yeah. Bummer. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I played in a band called Number Number One Band Very Good. That was our name. <laughs> That's funny. Very inspired by, like, Tim and uh, Eric. Tim and Eric, awesome show, great job. Yeah, I remember that show. 
I remember for the longest it didn't make sense, and then like one day I was like, you know what, this is just supposed to be stupid and so absurd it's funny. Yeah, yeah, it's absurdist. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it feels like maybe they're accessing something, like they're trying to like, they're expressing something about it. I almost look at it like a remix of society, like they just take some, like a normal shit and just like... Yeah. make it like absurd you know i guess that's yeah. i'm not saying anything special that's what absurdism yeah. is yeah yeah it's cool it's tim and eric's i never but i never watched that much of them actually i never like i just watched kind of like their greatest hits i guess yeah. like their funniest stuff hey I, I mean if you watched adult swim you probably saw them I, mean, I used to think it was stupid for the longest and i actually sat down and watched it i was like it's weird but i can appreciate it a little bit there's a lot of stuff in there that i don't laugh at at all though it's yeah like, yeah tim and dylan or tim <laughs> tim and dylan Tim and Eric. Uh, Tim Dillon is another one. Huh. Yeah, Tim Dillon's another. He's a good comic. Um, but uh, um, they, what, what was their uh, what was what was the name of your band again? The Pissant Militia. The Pissant Militia. That's a sick name. Yeah. That's a much more punk name. My band might not have been like traditionally like punk. I don't know. We were more surfy, but uh, yeah. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Pissant Militia. You were. Were you more like? <laughs> You like we break, break fast, break, break beat, like, break beat, just like three chord break beat, just like our singer screaming, like kind of hardcore. Like, God, I would love to mosh right now. What I love, give God, to that would be awesome. But, dude, dude, let's find some punk shows. Oh, dude, there, I hear there's a punk scene out here. Yeah, man, what year was that that you were doing in a in a punk band? Because you were like 18, 97, 98, somewhere yeah. around in there. That's a, that's a pretty cool time to be That actually was when the first time I had the, the breakdown was after a party with my band, and it was my first time drinking and shit like that. Yeah, it was New Year's Eve, and I had, like, remember I thought the world was going to end in 99 for some reason, like 98 into 99, and I was just stupid, and yeah, I went and drank a lot of freaking Jack Daniels. I want to try to write a story about it eventually, but I'd read it. You, you but I'd read it. But you, oh yeah. You had too much Jack, and you too first time Jack. drinking. You thought I, the world was gonna end. I thought the world was gonna end in the morning. I like drove home, and for some reason, I was like, I'm 18. I'm just gonna tell my parents what I did, and they can't fucking do anything about it. And I told them that I went and I smoked weed and I drank alcohol and they tried to take me to fucking rehab. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid parents. Yeah, dumbass parents. Uh. <laughs> and then I went to the rehab and I guess they determined it was like, ah, oh, he doesn't need rehab. He needs to go to the hospital. Oh, And no. then these two old people that I don't know for shit come and take me and put me in the back of their car. And they drive me to Birmingham and drop me off at this hospital and just like go to the seventh floor and they'll take care of you. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Go to the seventh floor. It sounds like a horror movie. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> thinking the world. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was yeah. a good time. Yeah, yeah. That sounds. <coughs> yeah, that sounds disturbing. Oh, wait, what was on the seventh floor? You didn't oh, the psych ward. <laughs> oh. The psych ward. They're just like, they tricked me. <laughs> Which I stayed in there for like a week, and you know, that was the first time. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing to have available if you need it. Oh yeah, definitely. If you have, going there is not a bad thing. I mean, I guess it's expensive as shit, though, right? Yeah, probably. Did you not have to pay? I probably did. Uh, Hospital bills are weird. It's almost like if you don't pay them, they can't come and take your body, right? Uh, You're not gonna come take my mental health hospital. Yeah, yeah, they'll, yeah, yeah, but you know, debt. Oh well, yeah, debt, 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 debt fucks you up. But if you think about it, that's just something that man created. Is it really real? It, it is real. It can fuck you up in a real way. I mean, and and maybe just like live outside society, learn to live off the land. That would be awesome. I wish that I was going to Alaska with Buddha. Oh, wow. Buddha. Brent Buddha. Oh, is he going to Alaska for, for the Brent? summer? Yeah, oh, okay. for two months. Yeah, but he is. He is going to Alaska. Shout out, uh, Brent Buddha. Have a good time. Hell yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's not listening. But, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I would. I, I, I sometimes. I, I've been thinking uh, quite a bit lately about how I wish I um, lived somewhere like Alaska, like way out in the middle yeah. of fucking nowhere, like but like scenic, like not 
not some huge patch of land in the Midwest. Just I I'm, I'm used to the Midwest. I need to be around people though sometimes. That's me. Me like, too. That's the trick. It's I want... just like sometimes I want to be alone, but more times I'd rather be around people. Mm-hmm. Same here. Same here. Um, yeah, I I've always had trouble at at jobs. I really hope that I can like make money and like you know support myself because that's otherwise like I have to like you know uh, I'm sure that I will be. I mean I've been able to work. I've I've just burned out of jobs because oh, I've yeah. hated them. You oh, know? I hate, I've hated every job I have. That's like part of I guess life. Yeah. I've never had a job I really liked. Learning to be mature is like yeah. Uh, it's just like and I don't know. I've gotten to the point. It's like what's the point in making friends at work because I'm just gonna quit one day or get fired. I need to find a better job than what I have now because they don't have work, and that's why I'm not at work right now. So Wait, what's your job now? I uh, work at a company called Star West that does. Bags. Star Wars? <laughs> yeah. What, you teabag people? <laughs> no, they uh, ba- bag tea, like different types of tea. Can you get me free tea? Maybe I can steal some. <laughs> <laughs> They're not listening to the podcast. <laughs> Please, I want some. I, I, I'd drink tea if it were free. Free tea. I would drink free tea too. Free but, tea for me. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's. You a, better give me some. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm, work, I'm working there, and I'm also working at Punchline. That's yeah, right. yeah. It's, people say it's cool, but at the same time, it is cool. Like I'll, I'll list the pros and cons. I guess the pros are I get to they they feed me every time I work. They like they give us free food, which is dope. Yeah, I mean I get to see touring nationwide headliners, like you know, bigger names. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that's awesome. I get it, a little, you know, a little extra money, obviously, but should I apply? It, it, I mean, yeah, if you want to. It's okay, they're not like it's not. So it seems like it would be a popular job. Is my concern? Like anytime I've tried to apply for a cool job, it's like no, we're always it's full. It's not really that popular, in my opinion. It's not that popular. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of depressing when you're when you work the local shows because you're just like. Oh, see all these people at fucking open mics oh yeah it's like it's like I want to be up there when it's like some a tour a headliner it's just like I can I can learn from this person it's like and watching your friends it's like yeah I could learn stuff from y'all too but I've already heard all y'all's acts and quite honestly it's making me sad that I'm I'm not getting booked at punchline it's probably humbling to you know uh or I guess it's yeah, it's humbling. That's the that, but you do get to like see the scene comics thing. I mean that's a huge perk in my yeah, mind. Yeah. I would love to have a job that yeah, lets get, me see comics. You get to like see how they deal with certain stuff, how they do. So it's interesting to seeing people do crowd work. Hmm. That's always fun. But yeah, then there's some crowd that don't want want crowd work done. You got to go around and tell people to shut up, put their phones <laughs> up. That's basically what I do. I check people in security, check IDs. Sometimes I'll see. It's a it's all right job. It's not hard, but mm-hmm. it's that's just, exactly what I'm looking for. I don't want to work hard. It's only part time, so yeah, put in for it, dude. They probably Sweet. hire you. I'll let them know. I'm like, fuck yeah, thanks, man. And I'll, I'll mention it. I was, I'll ask them next time I go in. Say I go in the bullet tomorrow. And I'm like, do we need people? Because I could probably yeah. get. That would be that would be cool. I have a bad. I, well, I'm talking on this podcast about I have a bad track record with work, but they won't they won't listen. And uh, I'm, no, they're not gonna listen. No, I, I'm I, sure. I'll just yeah, I'll let it's, say it's not bad, but um, yeah, no, I uh, I've I've worked at jobs for like a year. You know, I um, it would be it would be cool. I mean, I guess I might not be doing what you do. I might do. I might like. Do they have a kitchen? Do yeah, I think so. Okay. I mean, they'd find some dude with that, or maybe have you do some, be a server. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <coughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I was a server, I would have to really, like, uh, you know, do a lot of blow. <laughs> you know, that's the right move, right? I don't, know. Server. I don't know. No, that definitely is a, like, high, a, like fancy, like, uh, high end restaurants. Oh, and yeah. the cooks, too, are definitely, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> just get, like, you get, I, I guess you could get okay tips depending on the show, but you know, mm-hmm. 
And so, well, it seems, uh, I'm not sure, the server is one thing that I might not do there, that I might not be willing to, uh, being a, it seems really shitty to be a server at a comedy place, just because it's dark, and, like, finding people's tables when it's yeah. dark. I don't know why this means dark, but, like, it's... Just the light's low, yeah. I light's low, yeah. But, yeah, I've only did, I've been a server at IHOP one time, and it sucks. That wasn't for me, but getting tips is cool, but I never got tipped that good. Hmm. And like I said, depending on those shows, depends on the tips they get. Because some do, some audiences don't tip as well as the other ones. And different comics draw different audiences. So you know, depending on who's going through there, it's what you're gonna have to expect for the night. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm interviewing you for the job now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you, I, you have no. I'm needing to remember you have no actual authority to hire me. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the job, motherfucker. <laughs> Damn. Uh, no, I wish. <laughs> if it were, uh, no, I'll make whoever's hiring me my friend. Yeah, I'll make them. Uh, I'll make them like me. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll put on the, put on the works. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, so, I mean, have you? Uh, what other types of jobs have you worked? Oh man, I've did like, I've worked in factories, I've worked in warehouses. Tell me about factories. Factory work stuff. My first job ever was a factory job at this place that made printed circuit boards and they made Prime Star satellite receivers for the longest. And then I like worked there a while, running SMT machines. It sucked and then I actually worked in a call center for a couple of years for DirecTV. That was kind of fun, and it made me realize how stupid people really are. <laughs> <laughs> like, talking to people on the phone, having to have them do shit is... I can imagine. <coughs> yeah. When they, oh yeah, they need to, like, en- en- enter their info or, like, you know, they yeah, need to like, do something. Like getting them to unplug something, <laughs> check cables, or anything like that. It's like horrendous. Yeah. Old people are the worst with remote controls. <laughs> uh, yeah. I remember being on calls for 40 minutes with old people trying to program their remote control. So bad. Wow. That's, um, that, that sounds like work that would just drive you insane. Literally. Like, that sounds like Chinese torture. It's like bad. Like Chinese it's not torture. great. And then, like, when I was doing that job, I moved to where I was supposed to save the com- customers and keep them with the company. Oh, I never hardly saved anybody. I was like, I would just, like, people would be like, I want to disconnect, and then I before, would inform them that they have a year of programming commitment or something like that. And they would always get mad and be like, no, I'm not paying that. And I'm like, you know, get them to a point where they'll call back. A lot of times they'd hang up. It was it was okay. I used to enjoy it when people cuss me out, but it, I'd like put them on hold usually. Apparently, retail workers kill themselves at a really high rate. And like the article I was reading that like said that said that it was theorized that it was because fucking people are cussing them out <laughs> all the time. You didn't mind though. You didn't mind the heat. I thought it was funny sometimes. Sometimes I like. I was like, I could tell. I was like, I'm about to piss this person off because they sound like a dick. And then normally I did just by doing my job the way they told me to do it. And it's just like, and if the, it told me not to, you know, do it a certain way, I wouldn't do it that way. A lot of times, you know, you get permission from the citizens, like, just give them that. So I'm like, no, I'm not coming down off of this. You're going to take what I offer you or I'm going to disconnect your fucking service. <laughs> I feel like I disconnected way more than I say. <laughs> you know. Fuck them. Yeah, fuck them. Uh, yeah, if you're, if you're on the phone doing that shit, like, what? Well, yeah, I don't think I've ever liked a company that I've worked for because it's like, this isn't my company. Why do I give a fuck if you succeed? Yeah, yeah. Work sucks. <clears throat> yeah, Work definitely it sucks. It's just like this boring, like, time sap thing. Um, I'm curious about, like, it must have been, I assume, your departure from Christianity as a story. I'm kind of interested in that. Um, It's just, I don't know, I always question religion from an early age. Like, I used to be like, I asked a preacher one time, and I was like, well, if there were, what were the dinosaurs in the Bible if it happened a long time ago? Mm. Um, so, so you had a foot out the door already. Yeah, it's like when I was like young, it's like, why did I, yeah, no dinosaurs, just like, I remember at one point, I remember I found out 
that they actually didn't offer. They didn't, I thought they were, the money you take up, I thought they were giving it to God. I thought they were doing like in the Old Testament and burning it like a part of <laughs> offering. But no, they actually use it to buy stuff for the church. And I'm like, but that's not giving it to God. <laughs> And yeah, you know, I'm like, oh, you liars! <laughs> like, you're not giving it to God. It's just like religion is the ultimate, especially Christianity is like the ultimate prank because they have these huge, fancy, beautiful cathedral. I mean, I love churches; yeah. they're beautiful, right? And then that's all money that they could have given to the poor people that the yeah. Bible tells them to care so much about. Exactly. It's a. It's kind of a hilarious prank, though. In a way, it's kind of like a sick joke. Yeah, I just kind of even got over church. It was a. Uh, I feel like to drag me there. I was like, I don't care about it. My dad doesn't. Didn't never went. So. Yeah, I feel like what what church does for people that like it people get from other places like they for you from a sense of belonging to some comedy right yeah it's the same as comedy like mm -hmm. pretty much like yeah church is just another scene to be in like it's like minded people that's what people try to gravitate towards mm -hmm. in most instances yeah like I could have started I could have went to a church instead of started doing comedy you know if I was like trying to meet people but I didn't you know Mm -hmm. Well, comedy is more fun. Oh yeah, religion's kind of weird. It's culty. Yeah, uh, comedy is kind of anti-culty and like how much it places. Are you a bit of milk? Oh yeah, go for it. Go for it. Do it. Drink it. Drink it. I said drink it. Yeah, do it. Do it. Do I'm, you make yourself at home, man? I've never yeah. drank it by my. Uh, I've myself. never drank it. <laughs> okay, is that acceptable? Is that uh? Or are you? Are you going to cancel me for making fun of the South? See, I actually want to do it, like try to write a joke about that because like people always imitate my accent, but if I imitated anybody else's accent, that would be like, I I'd get in trouble for it, but it's okay for you to do it to me. I won't get you in trouble for it. I mean, I, I know, but if I'm, I, I'm, I want to work out a bit about that because I think it's funny. Mm -hmm. I think the idea of like somebody... Trying to do a southern accent and an Asian accent will be hilarious. Yeah, I would like to hear that. I would like to hear an act like an Asian person, like in from Asia in Asia, like yeah, exactly. Let's try to say it, try to say that, like try to. Uh, what? I want to hear. I want to hear what you're what you're uh, what you're shooting for, and then you'll do an impression of the Asian person. Yeah, oh, but yeah, but then I'd get canceled if I did an impression of the Asian person. Oh, I do that uh, these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah. I'm sure in front of some crowds you could probably do it and get away with it. I think in Sack you can get away with it. Sack seems pretty chill. Um, some places. Mm. Yeah, is there like, have you uh, gotten a vibe for uh, like which, uh, you know, if there's, are there venues that are more of like the woke, you know, college crowd in Sack? Um, some of the Midtown mics, which I haven't started popping back up yet, those are generally more progressive audiences that would get offended at certain jokes you know mm -hmm. like I know I'll do some of my jokes and it's just like you can see the entire crowd tighten up and it's just like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. well there's so that the, um, there's there isn't really a midtown mic right now but there's that one that might open up Okay. Luna's is supposedly supposed to open up at the middle of July. Luna's. All right, I'm going to try to offend the Luna's crowd by the middle of July. Cool. Uh, it's not hard. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, you shouldn't, like, intentionally try to offend crowds, I wouldn't say. But it's going to happen either way eventually. Only so, somebody's going to offend it, could get offended at anything you say. That's fair. <coughs> yeah. I mean, it's our right as human beings to get offended, I guess. But, you know... Right. You don't have to let it bother you because in the end, if it's just words, is it really hurting somebody? Yeah, sticks I and mean, stones. Right? It's like you could say anything to me, but it's like, why would I let you? You're, you're not physically touching me. I mean, you can say whatever the fuck you want. That doesn't make it true. It's I like just, it. Yeah. That's the same like, here, man. Yeah. Um, uh, but like the, I, I, I think... Um, it's worth exploring more or like I just I, I find it funny I guess I, maybe there's a bit in like uh, or, or there's something funny about like the religion being like just another scene like the, the, the church 
Ch- yeah. Church lady, right? Like the church yeah. mom, you know? It's just a different scene, basically. Like, you got your punk scene, you got your comedy scene, you got your church scene. Each church is its own little clique. And then you, like, you know, they'll have that stuff where other churches will come in and they'll hang out. We'll be like, hey, we're at this church. We're in the same religion. We believe the same things. We're hanging out. Uh, you know what I mean? Just stupid stuff like that. Church. Yeah. Church is Tribal funny. mentality. Yeah, exactly. That's... As long, once you realize that that's what it is, you can get some distance. That right. type of creature, though. Yeah, and now that's why it's good to understand yourself, because then it can give you some distance from it, which is also what like Bob uh, Newhart said about comedy. Comedy gives you distance from shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's tribes in comedy too. There's different types of comedians. Like, yeah. Different types of comics. Yeah, comics kind of group, kind of tend to like you know just like. You know, it's groups within groups, you know, yeah, people... Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, to hang out with people that are kind of... It's it's natural to hang out with people that are kind of similar to you in yeah. all the ways, you know. Um, yeah, it's but it's also, it's healthy to hang out. It's healthier to hang out with people that are more yeah. challenging. Yeah, and yeah, different right. and more... It's, yeah. it's, it is more... And it's like... Uh, can, that's the only way to learn. If you hang out with people who are different from you, you're not going to learn about anything else other than the stuff that people that are similarly minded because it's sort of like when someone is from a different background they're from a different world you know it's yeah, like you, it's differences it's like, and it's like i can't relate to any of that but you know you could still talk about stuff i mean ultimately nobody's gonna be able to fix the world i don't think uh, yeah we're fucked i, yeah, I we're definitely fucked. agree with that <laughs> that's fair we just sit down and smoke weed together and everybody get high and get along. Sing Kumbaya while the plane is going down. At least. Yeah. <laughs> that is kind of what's happening. I mean, we're getting like more civil as a society. Yeah. Know, we are. Society. Even though we're still so fucked. Like, that's the thing. It's, it's only ever been worse than us. Everybody's... It's better. It's probably the best it's ever been in, like, human existence. But at the same time, people only focus on bad stuff for the most part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we should celebrate good stuff more. You never see any good news. There's only bad news because people only want to like. They want maybe they want to see bad news to feel better about what's going on with their life. Which I don't know. I guess it's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I sometimes used to watch videos of like. There's this subreddit called uh, Catastrophic Failure, and it's oh, like, uh, you I, like that one? Yeah, yeah. I, I love that one, yeah, because, <coughs> see, I never mm. liked gore. I don't like watching anyone, I don't like watching people die that much, like, yeah. I, I don't like, I don't like when I can, I can like, tell that people are dying, I, but I like buildings collapsing, that shit's yes, funny, that like, funny. because, and we have a collapsing infrastructure in the United States, yeah. so, like, it's like, this is where we're going, so, you know, it's... I also like another subreddit that I really like is r slash fight porn. People getting knocked the fuck out. I mean, it's not porn at all. It's just people fighting. I uh, For some reason, I'm more into UFC just for the decontrolledness of it. Yeah. I, the street fights are always, like, scary. They always, like, you know, I, uh, I'm squeamish. I, I, like, I, I, I put myself in the shoes of, like, I'm like, oh, oh God, what's that happen to me? It's you know? just, like, I, I, like, whenever they... Just start punching people on the ground. I'm just like, yeah. I don't know why. It's just like, it's like, well, that guy, it should probably stop. But sometimes it's like, man, if I could do that, <laughs> I'd probably get a lot of anger out. But you know, it's the, nobody needs to hurt anybody. It's the mob mentality. <laughs> like, uh, there's this great video of um, a bunch of like guys dressed up as uh, superheroes, like a bunch of the, those people at like a. a the, the kid's birthday party and yeah. uh, one of them like Than- the one playing Thanos is like on the ground because like Batman got him or whatever yeah. even though they're from different properties <laughs> and uh, this kid runs up and kicks him in the head and then all these other kids run up and like mob him mob Thanos after the first kid kicks him in the head oh, it's, it's mob mentality man. Yeah. <laughs> It's great. It's like the, the hurling. It's like you know, hurling stones. You know, it's yeah. like stoning people to death. That's what these kids w- would have done if given the opportunity. Frankly, yeah, uh, so. yeah. Those kids are fucked up, man. Hell yeah. Uh, kids, kids in general are fucked up. Kids are fucked up nowadays. I yeah. don't know, but I don't know. Maybe the kids are all right. Isn't that an offspring? Maybe they Sorry. <laughs> they couldn't be worse than we were. Um, well, the uh, will. Uh, I want to ask you more about the uh, the punk 
uh, seen off yeah. air. I'm we're near the end of the podcast. I'm tired of talking, man. Honestly, this is I'm because I did a podcast with Josh and I hung out with and Josh last night. And he's he's uh, quite the talker. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I'm looking forward to um. Let's see what time is up. The, so we got a little bit of time before the Davis mic. That'll be good. We can yeah. uh, we can just chill out. We're gonna try bit. to go to the uh, Danny's mic too. Um. Yeah, that I'm sounds good. good. Yeah. Uh, did well, you we'll, look up how far away that is? It's like on the. I did. I looked up how far they were away, and God damn it, I had it up on my phone just. Uh, Okay, I think I'm gonna cut it off there. Uh, right. That's yeah, we, that's an hour and a half. Do you have any? Uh, you want to plug anything? Um, if you like other podcasts, uh, you can check out my podcast. It's Thorn in My Side podcast. We're just Thorn in My Side. Uh, if you want to reach me, Thorn in My Side podcast at gmail.com. That's podcast email. Or if you want to make read. Reach me on social media. It's the Southern Reject on Instagram. You can probably find the Southern Reject on Facebook as well. That's pretty much it. All right, sweet. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Later, everyone.